Hey, Marcus, how you doing? Hey, Dennis, good, man. Hope you are. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Hello? Hey, Dennis, can you hear me? How's it going, Marcus? Oh, it's going good. Can you hear me? You can't hear me? <laughs> okay. Let me, um... <clears throat> What about now? Can you hear me now? You can't hear me still? What in the world? Hey, Dennis, can you hear me? No. Let me leave and reconnect. Hey, Dennis. I don't know why nobody can hear me. What's going on here? Hey, Dennis, can you hear me? No? <laughs> well, I can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. So I can be heard. All right, cool. Yes, you can be heard. <laughs> All right, nice. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, Dennis. Hey, happy Friday, guys. Everyone's doing well today. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, it's one o'clock, but I, I do know a couple of people said they were going to be late. Um, so just so, make sure you let me know you can hear me. Um, if anybody can just comment, that'd be great. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Uh, I couldn't hear you, Sawyer, but I assume you, you said that you could hear me. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. I can yes, hear you. sir. For some reason I'm not, uh, I'm not hearing you. I can hear everybody fine. Yeah, same. Yeah, I don't have the best Wi-Fi, but I can hear you, Dennis. Yeah, everything's good over here. It might be on Dennis's end, Sawyer. Yeah, I can't hear, hear anybody for face. some reason. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> He's probably got his um, mic turned down, or his speakers down. Let's see here. Yeah. Let me um, check my audio settings. Sorry. Okay, I can hear now. Let's see. If, can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Sorry, I don't know what was going on. I, you know, I tested it. Well, I always tested before the session, and uh, for some reason, it was working fine, and and then it wasn't. So there you go. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for coming today, and um, we're gonna uh, talk about uh, influencer marketing. Um, so I have a, a short video I want to share with a, a person that uh, several people have suggested to me as being really smart, particularly on Instagram influencer. Now, I know that some of you uh, are, are already doing this and doing it well. So what I'd like to do, this is a relatively short video. When the video is over, let's talk about uh, each of your experiences or any questions you might have. Uh, and I have a couple of things to follow up from yesterday's meeting uh, with Tom Newell that I want to ask you about. So with that, I'm going to try to share the screen here and, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have success with this. So is everyone seeing my screen okay? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Charge me for a shout out. Jesus, you're expensive. Why are you so pricey? Yo, what up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Ari here, and today we're going to be discussing the most effective ways to use Instagram for your Shopify business. One of my first big breaks with Shopify was actually through Instagram influencer marketing. And even though this wasn't the biggest success ever, it did give me my first $3,000 a month. And from there, I leveraged all of that data to scale with Facebook ads. So Facebook ads are what I prefer to use because it's less time management, but Instagram can actually give you a really good ROI, especially if you want to start out with a low investment. So this is exactly why I wanted to create this video. I know a lot of you don't have a ton of money to start up your business, and this is exactly why you're looking into drop shipping or just lean ways to actually promote your business online. So you came to the right place. We're definitely gonna be covering everything you need to know, and I'm gonna be giving you a few secret tips in between there that have really helped me out a lot. So first things first, I do recommend you use Instagram influencers when you have less than $1,000 to spend on your first first business here and the reason why is because when you start out with low capital it will be difficult to get a good return on investment on Facebook ads because you have to continuously spend money every single day at least 50 to 100 dollars a day so of course if you didn't make any sales or were really unprofitable with a thousand dollars total budget you could only really run your ads for like 10 days and then you know you would blow through your whole budget and this is actually what happened to me when i first started i remember vividly getting into facebook ads and just running a ton of ads not really knowing what i was doing and blowing 800 dollars in one month with literally zero sales 
So that was an absolute nightmare. And luckily this was four years ago. And of course I've learned from that experience. I've learned a ton about Facebook ads and just digital marketing in general so that that never happens to me again. But I've never had similar issues like that with Instagram influencers. And the main reason is because you work on a post per post basis. So, you know, you pay the influencer, for example, $50 once and you measure how good the results are from that influencer. And then you move on to the next one as opposed to, you know, just continuously spending tons of money every day and not really knowing whether or not you're going to get a result this way it's actually a little bit more controlled and if you have a good combination of the right ad the right product the right website and the right page it can actually give you way better returns than Facebook ads so of course the first thing that I want to cover is what types of influencers to use so there's of course many different types of influencers but the most commonly used ones for people that, like I said, have a low budget to start up their Shopify business is theme pages and meme pages. But of course, there are other types of influencers such as personal brand influencers, like your boy right here. I mean, I don't like to call myself an influencer, but I do have a bit of a following and therefore some brands do reach out to me to promote their products. And this is the same thing with, you know, fitness influencers or lifestyle influencers, fashion influencers, whatever it may be, there's a ton of personal brand influencers out there. And those of course are much more expensive to work with. And I would not recommend that you actually reach out to any personal brand influencers if you're just starting your business. And the reason why is because you're not really gonna know, of course, right off the bat, whether you're gonna get a good return on your investment or not. So it's not smart to start out big you want to start out with smaller pages and then eventually move up to something like that once you build more of a brand. Personal brand influencers really work the best, not necessarily to get a huge ROI, but for getting brand credibility and just building brand awareness. If you can get a trusted influencer involved with your brand, you know, you can use some of the content that they make for you, or you can just make even an ad with them. And that will definitely draw in a ton of customers. But beyond that, it will give your brand a ton of trust. So that's when it's a good idea to go to the next level and talk to those sorts of influencers but to begin with it's much more cost efficient and safe for you to actually just reach out to themed pages so as you can see on my screen here's like a random meme page that i found i literally just looked up memes and this page came up something like this is not bad and i think meme pages are actually pretty good largely because they're a lot cheaper than other pages but I will say that they're not as targeted, right? This is super random traffic. It's just random people. Even though there's a lot of eyeballs on this content, it's really, really random. So it's not very high quality traffic. But if you're just beginning, I do recommend that you just message as many pages as you can. And you know, for something like this, ADHD meme therapy, maybe it would be good to find some sort of funny product that's also related to relaxation or focus. Like honestly, a fidget spinner back when they were actually popular would have been perfect for a page like this, right? Because it's kind of funny, quirky, and also therapeutic in a way. But a theme page that is much more targeted, for example, is something like this, Pregnancy Workout, right? This page has 471,000 followers. And of course, as you can see, they don't have the best engagement, but I'm sure that the traffic that this page has is very high quality. And of course, it's very targeted. Anybody who's gonna be following this page is definitely gonna be into fitness and is probably gonna be pregnant or already a mom. So something like this is definitely the best starting point and it's gonna give you a better return on investment. But of course, don't just blindly do a shout out with any page. Make sure that you know you negotiate the best prices possible. Literally, as far as negotiation tactics, all you have to do is ask. So if they say a 24 hour post with a story shout out is gonna be $80, say, okay, thanks for letting me know. Would you be willing to take $60 instead? Something along those lines. You really just have to ask. And if you don't ask, you're actually probably missing out on some savings. So it definitely pays to ask. Just to make this example more clear, here's another page in that is very, very niche specific. So this is survival school. So of course, this is anything related to outdoor and survival products. So any sort of survival thing that you could possibly imagine this page would fit in with perfectly and they actually have pretty solid engagement and i'm sure a page like this is only going to cost you you know 10 to 20 dollars or something 
to run a feed post plus a story shout out. And the amount of traffic that you can get to your store is gonna be hugely beneficial for you once you do have enough money to spend on Facebook ads. So this is actually an amazing way to get started with your store. Now, the last tip I wanna give you with these theme pages is of course to try to make an ad that fits their feed so that it actually gets some really good engagement and has the potential to get on the explore page. If you're not doing that, then it's chances are your ad's not gonna do as well as it could. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Now, moving on, I wanna talk about a different way to sort of use Instagram. Now, this pairs really well with any sort of Shopify business that you're running, especially if your demographic is very active on Instagram, and that is to post a ton of stories on your page. So I have a page here called White Market, and this page has been around for so long. And as you can see, they've made 6,645 posts. And this is actually a Shopify store, uh, a pretty cool Shopify store, if I may say so myself. I actually really like this store a lot because it's very well branded. And you know, they did change their name to Wi-Fi Gallery now, but that's pretty cool. Everything is so on brand. And I'm sure that they're doing amazing. They used to get like 300,000 monthly visitors back in the day before they changed their name. And as you can see, if we look at their stories, every single day they promote their shop, like every single day. And as you can see, this is all the stuff they sell and they're just promoting every day. And all they really post is memes. They don't really post many of their products on their feed. And I'm not saying that that's actually the way to do it. I think you should definitely mix it up. But finding relevant content to your brand from just other sources and giving them credit is a good way to build a lot of momentum to your page and attract people to your page. And then you can post a ton of story promotions on your own page. And as long as they're really well branded, they will perform really well. And of course, what you can do with these stories is measure their metrics and then the ones that do the best, you can actually run on Facebook ads. This is what I've been doing in order to test new creatives sometimes. I'll just throw up a sequence of stories and see how well they perform. And if they do decently well, I'll test it with Facebook ads. And more often than not, they actually do perform very, very well. So I wanna quickly show you how you can create a story ad now. Of course, it's very simple and some of the best story ads that I've had are filmed literally with my phone. And I honestly use Canva for basically basically everything nowadays. I'm not very well versed in Photoshop. I'm not that good with it. So every time I try to use it, it just takes me forever to get anything done. Whereas on Canva, I can usually find things pretty quickly, like a good template to use. And that really helps out. So I'll type in e-commerce here. So something super simple like this, let's say this is your product would really work. So you could literally put your logo here and you know, whatever ad copy you're running. So for example, this product right here on AliExpress, it ships from the US and it has just some amazing product images. I think these images are so nice and high quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image and then I can simply upload the picture here on Canva, you know, make my own little template. Let's just get rid of all this stuff. Honestly, we can just start from scratch here and we'll just make this full screen and we can pick something here that, you know, fits our vibe. And then of course, for example, we can go to a big brand like Sephora and look to see just what they're saying with their, okay, they're charging $70 for this stuff. Wow. Okay, so they don't really say anything. Obviously they have a huge brand, so they don't really need to say anything, but let's look at Glossier. Glossier is a lot, a little better. Okay, so I like this, a fluffy, soft, perfectly dense powder brush. So fluffy, I can say something like fluffy and fluffy and modern at a price you can afford. And there it is. You can call me the story ad Picasso because this is some fire right here. I would totally run this. This looks super clean. And of course, make sure that your site also has this sort of this same font and same sort of branding because if your ad is not congruent with your store, chances are it's not gonna perform very well. So something like this, I think, you know, this is perfect. I think this would definitely get some sales. So hopefully that helps. I do wanna make a video real, real soon about how I actually make video ads. So make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more. We are making videos every single week now and I love seeing you guys comment on every single one. I answer every comment, of course. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. Let me know your experience with Instagram influencers. I'm really curious to know. And of course, make sure you check out the Netsphere 
community. We've been growing steadily and it's amazing to see everybody that has joined so far is the exact type of person that I wanted in the community. Everybody's happy, everybody's getting value. And I actually just uploaded a brand new video in the community of all the different types of stores. And I do use a demo store that I created for Netsphere specifically, where I use all the branding strategies that I've learned in order to give a really good example. And as you can see, the members really love this stuff. So make sure that you check it out if you haven't already. And with all that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be seeing you in my next one. Peace. What's up guys, Anton here from dropshiplifestyle.com. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you. Okay, well, there you go. Any, uh, any comments or reactions to this uh, fast and furious little uh, little demo by this guy? You, you may have heard of him before. I, I've had several people suggest to me that he does a good job of explaining. Um, I thought he did. So uh, Ashley, what do you think? I really, really enjoyed the whole video. Like I, I've personally worked with a lot of influencers and that's how I've grown my business throughout the past couple of years, just making connections with really big Instagram pages. And I would send them like a free product. I mean, cause my jewelry, I sell it pretty high, but it, the cost of me to make it is not that high. So in the end, it doesn't cost me a lot to work with these influencers. So I'll send them a free piece or two and then they'll promote it on their page. And sometimes they'll share a discount code or whatever to refer people back to my website or back to my Instagram and stuff like that. And so that's how I've been able to grow it fairly inexpensively. And I found that those kind of things I feel like is a lot more organic than working with ads through Facebook and Instagram. Like I've never had really any luck with those. And maybe it is because I just don't really know how to run those as well. But it's been a lot easier for me to find influencers that really kind of have the same vibe as my brand and my pieces. And since I make such a variety, there's always something that they're able to find and they really like and they're able to promote it. And there's always been some influencers that aren't as great as others, but I found that they really are super helpful. And a lot of the people that buy stuff from me through them end up becoming repeat customers because they want to have sort of the lifestyle of that influencer. And that has just overall helped me grow the most, I think. Yeah. I, I, if you, uh, if you don't mind sharing, like um, how, how many influencers do you work with it say on a monthly basis or whatever the measure that you use? Uh, as far as like actual influencers, really big accounts, I have been kind of slacking on finding new ones. I have like two or three well, two that I work with on a more regular basis, or three, one of them, she's, I think, uh, Steffi Lee, I don't know, she's a bigger YouTube person or whatever from California, and I've sent her some pieces and she'll promote them. Um, then there's another one, I think she's in Washington. I work with her, it just depends, like, sometimes I'll send them a piece and exchange for, like, a one post or something like that with a small review, but sometimes, you know, they'll wear the pieces other times and they'll still tag me in it, and so that's been helpful but i guess on a monthly basis maybe one or so i guess if you count as far as like those kind of influencers maybe not even that because i haven't really been as active doing that like i should but i have worked with other i guess maybe you could say influencers in a way where like i'll work with really large accounts of other artists and i'll send them pieces and we'll kind of collaborate on a small collection and that has helped me grow my sales as well even though it's not like I'm sending them something to promote. It's still promoting both of our work, but that kind of collaboration has been really, really helpful as well. And I do Please. two or three yeah, of those. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Please finish. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Uh, no. And I just, you know, two, three, four of those kind of collaborations a month with okay. like bigger artists like that. Okay. Is your, is your only cost uh, the, the pieces that you send or are you also paying some other kind of fee? Uh, yeah, I'm really only paying for the pieces, the materials, and then the shipping. So unless I'm shipping outside of the U.S., it really doesn't cost me more than 5 to $10, depending on, you know, what kind of insurance I put on it and things like that. So the actual pieces, I mean, I might sell them for a couple hundred, but the actual cost of me to make that is much less, and it doesn't cost me much at all. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Taylor, what do you think about, uh, I know you came in a little bit late, uh, what do you think about uh, the whole idea of, of influencer marketing, uh, particularly on Instagram? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a growing market. Um, I went to a conference last year at the Carolina Inn in Chapel Hill. Um, it was called Influenced. Yeah, it was actually almost exactly a year ago. Um, and we got to hear from um, influencers from Nashville. Um, they had a lot of people come in and um, they just presented a lot of um, good evidence that the influencer market is growing and um, how a lot of people are starting to turn to influencers for their recommendations when it comes to um, like what shampoo should I use like other like little daily choices instead of googling what's the best shampoo a lot of women especially in my target market have an influencer that they follow on Instagram who they go to for everything so um, we think it's a good it's a good opportunity um, but at the same time it's kind of it's a, it is a um, marathon not a sprint when it comes to working with influencers and I'm sure other people who have done this can attest to this as well um, if you want to get in with an influencer who has a lot of followers, a lot of reach, you have to start early before reaching out to them. So, um, for example, if you wanted to work with someone who had a lot of followers, you would start by following them and commenting on their posts and engaging with them, watching their Instagram stories, responding to their Instagram stories to start to build that relationship before you reach out. Because if you do that, then they're going to value you as a company more. Um, they'll be more likely to work with you and probably more likely to work with you at a lower cost compared to if you just follow them and then immediately like DM or email them and say, hey, like, let me send you my product and you do this or whatever. Um, and one thing I also do every year is I um, send out Christmas cards to um, a lot of people, um, but influencers included. Um, so even if I've not met someone before or if there's someone I would like to work with, like I send a Christmas card to Joanna Gaines every year because she, that would be goals. But anyway, um, so I send out a Christmas card to anyone that I would ever like to work with. And I just tell, I just say nice things. I, um, I don't know, I write like a personal note to each of them. And I've gotten really good response from it. I've actually made a lot of connections and things like that from doing little personal touches like that. The trick is that um, whenever I reach out to people like that, I never ask for anything. If anything, I offer something um, because it shows that I'm genuinely trying to make a connection with them, not just trying to make money off of their assets, like their followers or whatever. Right. Do you, would you characterize uh, the deals that you make with influencers? Do you, are you paying a fee or are you, are you trading product? How does that work? It really depends on who it is and um, how much they know about being an influencer. Like for example, there's one influencer who I have almost worked with before who only had 7,000 followers and she was going to charge a fee plus um, we would send her the product for free. And then there's another influencer who is picking her items up today and she did not charge a fee at all. And she has like five times the amount of followers that the person who was going to charge us for did. So I think it's just kind of their own personal preference. There's not like a market level that's like if you have this many followers then they are probably going to charge this it just really depends right. um and then there are some companies that represent influencers i'm sure it's more standard if you go through a company like that because they manage all of their stuff for them so it would probably be more standard that way but um yeah that's my experience with it um you know it, it's interesting I, I obviously i i'm old so I, I might remember this stuff more than than some of you but you know when when i was younger especially when i was a kid um you know, particularly for consumer products, you know, like, uh, I don't know how many of you remember Madge with the dishwashing liquid, um, or, you know, the, the different Tide or, or even the Irish spring commercials, for the, which was a soap, that the way those things worked is really kind of a macro model in that they, they try to be an influencer brand. Uh, and the way they would deliver is through mass marketing, or mass purchasing of advertising. Uh, and this made it very difficult for startup brands to even break through. They, they had no chance of getting on network television for cost and production. But then you started seeing a lot of uh, endorsers, you know, people who, who were paid to uh, endorse a product. It might be an athlete. It might be a, a movie star. You know, any, anything you can think of has, has been done. And it's interesting to me that now that we have this kind of distributed model, uh, if you will, through through the different outlets like Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, um, influencers are, are somewhat in that same role of endorser or, uh, you know, somebody famous that everyone goes, oh, yeah, I, I know her. Or I've seen that person. Um, so it is interesting to me. And but the really cool thing is this does not have to cost a lot of money. Uh, and I think uh, the, the limit really is how much time 
do you have to actually do this and figure this all out? Uh, you know, clearly Ashley and, and Taylor have spent some time on this arena. I'm curious if anyone else in the group has any, any comments or thoughts about this as well. Marcus, have you, have you got involved with influencers at all with your uh, business? Um, no, not yet. Um, <clears throat> just because I, we, you know, we're software and, you, you know, in order to get people to use our service, it would have to be like city, city based. You know, uh -huh. So that's one of, one of the things. Um, but, but we are, we are paying to be on a panel uh, that'll give us some publicity in the uh, automotive sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. Sawyer, how about you? Anything uh, in this arena from your experience? Um, yeah, I've dabbled in some influencer marketing a little bit, and, uh, you know, it can work well. You just need to make sure that you're using an influencer that's, you know, related to whatever you're trying to do. So I've worked with one influencer in specific, and he had half a million followers, um, but he really didn't have anything related to fitness. He really had like a lot of younger kids that follow him and stuff like that. So it really didn't do much. Um, you know, all I had to do was just give him like a tub of pre-workout. I didn't pay him or anything like that. And um, he gave me a couple of story shout outs. And um, again, he's got like over 500,000 followers, but I might've gotten like three followers off of that. So, you know, really do your research on that influencer. Make sure that there's somebody that's, you know, in that realm of whatever you're trying to offer. Um, because if it's a lot of people that are, you know, just into video games and then they're posting about a supplement product that has nothing to do with video games, then they're probably not going to be interested in what that influencer is offering. Yeah. Yeah. If I could just sort of step in and add something else to that. Like as far as the follower account goes on certain accounts, like you can look at a certain account and they may have 50 to 200,000 followers. And they, if you look at their posts, they don't get a lot of engagement. And those influencers are more or less like, I feel like they buy their followers or something. There's just, they're not going to really be helpful. There's other websites now that you can like put in their username or whatever it is. I don't remember what they're called and it'll kind of show you their percent of engagement. And I think that really helps you find out if that influencer is worth working with or not, because I've in the past made mistakes of like, you know, sending a product to somebody who had like a hundred thousand followers. And like Sawyer was saying, like I only got, a couple followers from them and it was kind of a waste of my time and product and I think when you reach out to these influencers if you're planning on trading a product or something you really need to be specific on what you're expecting them to do like somebody I know she sent off products to somebody and didn't I guess wasn't specific and they posted a crappy quality photo on their page and it just didn't do well at all so you really need to be specific when you reach out to these people as well you know tell them hey I want this story share and I want this and I want a really good photo or I want you to wear the piece you just have to be specific with it as well. Absolutely. And then I had another guy who, um, he's a buddy of mine. We grew up, he actually plays on the Oakland Raiders. And um, then he gave me a shout out and he's got like 50,000 followers and I got like 30 followers off of that. So it was just more in the realm of fitness. You know, he's a football player and stuff like that. Um, you know, people are probably following him who actually do work out and stuff like that. So, um, and the, the person with the influencer with the 500,000 followers, his followers are all real and stuff. He's just a part of the Mr. Beast crew. So it's like a lot of younger children and stuff, I would say. So you just got to really make sure that you, um, and that is a great point. You can look up to see, you know, what kind of engagement somebody's getting um, and make sure their followers are real. You can typically view a video and see how many views that video is getting. And if it doesn't really correlate to how many views they're getting for how many followers they have, it's not hard to tell who has fake followers and stuff like that. Yeah, and you want their audience to be the same kind of audience you're looking for too. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So ahead, that yeah. tool is called an audit. So you could just look up like a Twitter audit, Instagram audit, whatever. Um, and then typically, you know, they're all free, just like a web page. You type in the username and then it'll like give you a report back and it'll say, you know, they estimate, you know, 74% of the followers are real or something like that. And typically a lot of them are colored too. So, you know, it'll be like green if that's good quality, because even though it sounds like, you know, only 74% are real, you know, if they're larger, you know, say they have 500,000, you know, that's actually really good um, because most of the accounts, like it's not that they're not real, but they might just be inactive or dead accounts or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, engagement's huge. So I've done influencing um, with my own personal you know, business brand back when I had like 30,000 followers, um, you know, and, and it really just depends. I've done business development as well for a um, uh, kind of like a, 
a meme uh, type of channel across Instagram. They had like six different accounts with like over 8 million total followers. And, you know, I, I did a lot of reaching out to uh, influencers to sell them shout outs and things like that. Um, and it, it all just varies. I mean, like the video said, and, and a lot of people touched on, I mean, it really just depends on the person because, you know, with my page, I would have people reach out like, Hey, if I send you this apparel, like, like, you know, will you promote it? Things like that. And I'm like, yeah, sure. But then I'll also have some other people that will reach out and be like, you know, Hey, if I send you this product, will you promote it? I'm just like, eh, not really. Like, you know, it has absolutely nothing to do with my audience. And for me as an influencer, like, you know, I value my posts. My posts are my, you know, value proposition. So, you know, if I'm always posting stuff that's unrelated to my audience, you know, that's bad for me. So typically those are normally the deals where influencers will charge as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all just dependent on the users and, you know, just the whole scenario. I had two things I wanted to add really quick. Um, Take your time. Yeah, thinking about um, like I heard a lot, a lot of people talking about like how many followers you, how many followers you get from an influencer sharing about you, which is a good metric. But um, for me, the best metric that I look at is how many um, orders actually came as a result, and that can be hard to track sometimes. But one thing that you can do when you're working with an influencer is to give them a coupon code. It doesn't <coughs> need to be something that they um, like profit off of or make a commission off of, but something where it's just like their name with the number 10 after it or something and then you know if anyone who uses that coupon code on your website or whatever came from that influencer um, that can let me that lets me know when I work with someone if I want to work with them again because um, obviously it is an investment to work with an influencer and um, you know that like you could possibly get sales or follows or whatever and then them not use the coupon code um, but it most of the time a follower well, like why wouldn't you use a coupon code so um, if you see it but anyway, that's one thing that you can do. And another thing when it comes to um, thinking about influencers and um, things like that, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but anyway, um, just thinking about like, how can, you, how can you measure your return on investment, whether that's using a coupon code or um, increasing your email list, like that's another thing that like, adds direct value where followers like, yes, it's good to have more followers, but if, how many of those followers are actually like paying customers? is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with what Taylor just said. Um, one common practice in the industry too is um, a lot of influencers will, they're fine with promoting stuff uh, for free, especially if you're sending them a product. But a lot of them, um, you could, they'll likely charge you for this um, a little bit, but you could send them a link for a swipe up, like on stories and things like that. Um, and if they do a swipe up, most of them do charge, I've found, or at least in the areas that I've dabbled in with influencers. Um, but that's really nice because you could create like a custom like subdomain or some, something within your, your website and use that specifically for influencers. So if you send it to them to post on their story as a swipe up link, the only people that have that link are people that are you know, getting sent there by influencers. So that's a really good way to measure um, kind of the value that they add, because in my opinion... Uh, for majority of influencers, I think it's best to look at them as kind of just lead generators, not necessarily the salespeople. Um, because, you know, you might get an influencer that, you know, if you give them a coupon code and only one person buys it, it doesn't seem successful. But if you send them the subdomain and they use that, you could see, okay, 450 people clicked on this link. And out of those 450 people, you know, I could see exactly what other pages they browse or, you know, I could see what products they viewed, things like that. So, you know, the influencer is doing a better job than what you think they are. So maybe that's just time for you. You know, that might be telling you, you know, something's up with your website. Maybe you might want to change something because you're getting the traffic to your website. They're obviously interested if they're clicking around and looking at multiple things. So how do you, how do you secure that sale from there? Okay. No. Ashley, were you going to say something? Or, or Taylor, whoever. Um, I just remembered it. Um, another thing you should do when you work with an influencer, if they have a blog, have them backlink to your website. Um, I know Ashley was talking about being really specific with what you're asking for. Um, I always send out a contract that says exactly what I want when I want it and have them sign it and send it back to me. And I always make sure that if they have a website that they write a blog post or something about the product that they received um, using a specific keyword and then backlink to my website. Um, this really only works well if they have a high score on Google. Um, so maybe a larger influencer that has like, well, just because they're a successful influencer on Instagram doesn't mean that they have a like high ranking 
website on Google necessarily, um, but this can be another thing that honestly I think is more powerful than influencers is finding blogs to feature you in their 15 best pre-workout mix or whatever. Um, things like that I think are a lot more um, a better return on your investment because you're moving up in Google rankings and you have a lot more control over everything. Because let's face it, Instagram has control when you're on their platform, but when it's your website, you have do whatever you want. Yeah. Ashley, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, no, I think Taylor pretty much covered everything else that I would have thought about as far as like using discount codes and how followers don't necessarily generate sales. I think all that's definitely important because a lot of people that I know, they focus too much on the followers and I'm just like, you know, they'll have a big follower account, but I'm like, if it doesn't generate sales, it's not really worth it. Yeah. Well, I'll, I think, I'll, uh, mention, I'll, I'll mention something. I'll mention something real quick that, that's kind of helping us that's not influencer marketing. So our client base lives on LinkedIn. That's where they're at 99% of the time. So, <clears throat> you know, for me personally to sit there and try to reach out to each individual LinkedIn person uh, by job title could be very time consuming. So I found this platform called Cleverly, that's C-L-E-V-E-R-L-Y, Cleverly. And it does an automated LinkedIn drip campaign for you. So it, you know, it's just like email sequencing, but it's for LinkedIn and it finds your prospects on LinkedIn. Now this is probably more so along the lines for service-based type businesses uh, versus product product-based businesses. But <clears throat> that seems to be working pretty pretty well for us, getting us uh, presentations set up so that we can sell sell more customers. And it does it automatically. And it's only about 200 bucks, 200, 300 bucks a month uh, for us. But for us, I mean, it may sound like a lot of money, but for us, if we sell one or two or three customers uh, every two months from that, it was well worth it because um, it helps us grow our monthly recurring revenue and hopefully AAR as well. Okay. And when you say AR, you talk about annually renewing? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, this, this is a good conversation. And uh, if any of you have specific leads like uh, Marcus just mentioned cleverly, go ahead and put them in the Slack channel uh, if you can, and uh, folks can, can benefit from it. Um, one of the things in this uh, video that we watched it, that he mentioned was that he uses this influencer marketing Instagram as a precursor to what he might do on Facebook. Um, with, and he sounded like Facebook ads is where he put most of his time and attention. Um, anybody have any comments on that? I haven't heard too much about Facebook ads from this group. Anyone have any thoughts or experiences they want to share? Yeah, we, we run a lot of Facebook ads when we sign up a new facility to try to drive new customers into them right away. Um, so that they feel like they're getting an immediate, you know, benefit from it. Because with our service, you know, their customers have to know about the, the service at the very beginning. And, um, you know, it's new, it's new to their client base. So we, we use Facebook ads to try to generate, you know, early adoption from, from their customers or people that aren't their customers uh, that will become their customers, you know, quickly after they see the ad. So we, we do that and that seems to be working really well for us. Uh, we've, we've also used um, like LinkedIn ads, um, you know, across that platform to try to, you know, get more presentations for us. When, when you say presentations, you're talking about the dealers themselves as your target, as opposed to consumers. Is that right? Yeah. On, on LinkedIn. Yes. But on, yeah. on the Facebook side, uh, we will go in, in like a radius of like Raleigh, for example, and just target like a 20 mile radius of, you know, people who go to target who like target uh, mothers who, you know, mothers or people that have, you know, children that, that like diapers or huggies, you know, <laughs> so we're yeah. extremely targeted uh, towards a certain demographic. And I think knowing your demographic is really important so that you target the right people um, as well. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I would imagine uh, Facebook ads, you know, that's, that's real money you have to spend. Uh, and some of these other approaches are, uh, trades or, or other, uh, you know, other ways of, of getting the word out. So I, I get that. Um, a couple of things I wanted to just bring up. Um, so um, I, th I thought Taylor's comment about Christmas cards was, was really good and makes a lot of sense. 
Um, and I'll share with you something I've done in my business career. And I have to say, this is more in the past than, than currently. Uh, but I was very big at with thank you notes. And uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, people that I met or ran across or pitched or whatever, uh, how much they would appreciate uh, a thank you note or just a little note. Uh, of course, today we can do that by email or other, other ways, but uh, in, in the past, uh, that was very impactful. And I also found that uh, almost nobody did that in the space I was in, which was executive compensation. Um, so uh, it was a real easy way to stand out, took a little bit of time. We you know, spent a little bit of money to make sure that the, the thank you notes and all that were very high quality and, and, and branded for us and so forth. Um, but I think uh, I like, like the idea of the Christmas card is just reaching out and trying to make a, a, a personal connection, I think makes sense for just about everybody that's in this program. I would think uh, so that's something to think about as well and i'm not advocating uh, sending thank you notes by the mail i'm just expressing um, some experiences i've had um so yesterday uh we heard from tom newell uh and um you know tom is uh, one of my oldest friends and was in my wedding and was my lawyer and so we we go way back so i knew him before he was rich and famous but he really is uh, uh, an impressive guy, and I think you'll agree his presentation was was really good. and And he is a um, he is a significant investor. He invests in startups and has a group uh, that he is part of that he's the chairman of um, that invests. So just keep that in mind. and And with that, um, when he called me later just to follow up and see what people thought, his first comment was, "Taylor." Uh, started following me on LinkedIn. And uh, that really caught his attention, right? That Taylor had made an effort. Uh, I hope you did, Taylor. I hope he's not full of shit. But anyway, um, you know, he I did it. I, I went through and followed everybody. Everyone, like, I think it was like the first or second day of Accelerate Rule. I went through the entire list of Slack and followed everybody on LinkedIn. F fantastic. Oh, good. Well, I, the only point I'm making is that uh, it really stood out. So I, I would encourage all of you. That is a really easy thing to do, even if you don't use LinkedIn that much. Uh, he'll notice. Uh, we're going to bring him back. He's he's got some ideas that I think will be beneficial. So, and I have others uh, like him that. Uh, so I think uh, developing a routine of appreciation, gratitude, thank you, follow, whatever whatever it is that you express. Uh, don't think you're not important because you are. You're you're the next generation, and many of compared to me anyway. Uh, so I'm going to encourage you to think about how can you stand out? What can you do to connect? And I'm going to just throw out a couple other things that I haven't heard much here. So I realize that you all are, are looking for your customer in your market. But I was thinking about, um, you know, what is wrong with taking a look at whether it's a campaign or some other kind of effort, uh, perhaps aimed at faculty at ECU as one example. Is there something you could offer or promote uh, to them or, or to the staff? You know, so you have staff and faculty at ECU is just one example. Um, and of course, uh, the students, whether it's undergraduate or whether it's medical students, these are all discrete populations in our area. And there's somewhat over 30,000 of them, I believe in total. And I think also another group uh, is Viden, uh, Viden Medical. I don't know if you've reached out ever to the Viden president or the Viden CDO uh, and talked about them. Uh, maybe there's, uh, you know, I don't know that they're influencers, if that makes any sense, but uh, just be thinking about markets that are right in your uh, backyard. Uh, they might be very interested, particularly as the holidays come up uh, and there's an opportunity to do some gifting. Um, you know, I think that's something that uh, you really should give some thought to. Um, the other thing I want to just touch on this, and, and we'll have Ann Jones uh, go more in depth on this, but uh, in our uh, mentoring activity with Ann's company, um, which is called AccuLink, if, if you're familiar with it, we learned some pretty amazing things that I did not know uh, existed in our market, and it had to do with uh, packaging uh, and incredibly affordable packaging and incredible high quality packaging. So I don't want to go steal all of Ann Sunder on this. We may, may have a presentation from her because uh, I think all of you uh, would benefit from 
knowing what's available right here in Greenville. Uh, and and um, it's a simply, simply remarkable uh, packaging opportunity for, uh, for gifts, for, uh, for Sawyer's products, uh, for uh, copper ashes, et cetera. Um, and even for Weiss Farm, I think some, some products that could conceivably be sold in packages. So I did want to just raise the flag on that. And Anne, I don't know if you want to just add something briefly on that. Sure. Um, many of you have been by Greenville. We're in the old Lowe's building on Greenville Boulevard. Uh, and AccuCopy, which is does business as AccuLink now, just opened up a new um, division called AccuFlex. And it's a multi-million dollar investment for which we make pouches, full pouches. Um, and it's the kind of pouch that uh, you would see, you know, probably about four or five inches wide and the length would be different, anywhere six, eight, ten inches tall, where you might see granola or nuts or whatever. But they, we, we print. Uh, and we manufacture these pouches with and with uh, child-proof zip box, which is I think a great feature that many other pouchers cannot do. But we've started up in July, and we're launching this business. Um, it is uh, new to market, and I think there's like 20, 20 companies across the whole U.S. that have the technology that we have to print. Um, we are one of the, we're the first company in the world that is able to use color logics with HP color printers that gives you unbelievable graphics. Um, it looks like it's foil material, um, holographic, just absolutely wonderful. Um, we're, we're, as I said, we're in startup mode. Um, we would be interested to talk to anybody that has use for that, our product, uh, or if you have any leads to help us grow further, we'd appreciate it. But um, when this whole COVID thing is, is over or we're to a point where everybody can travel, we do welcome visitors. Uh, I'm also in a position where we can send you out pouches if you have interest in it. But it's a really, really neat, um, neat business. A lot of opportunity for us and for the area. Uh, and, and you also, the other products that we make, um, you'd be quite surprised what occurs here in, in this little building in Greenville. Um, we make, uh, we because you all were talking about thank you notes and cards and different things like that. We do custom printing as well uh, for many of the major U.S. suppliers on e-commerce, as well as sublimation, which is personalization of uh, mugs, cups, uh, just about anything you can think of that you would buy personalized. Very similar to Taylor's work, but. Uh, uh, done in a different way. So uh, we'd be interested to talk to anybody that wants to know more about the packaging business or what else we do here. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate it. So sure. um, one of the things that, um, that I found really fascinating was their ability to serve uh, startup brands in uh, consumer packaged goods uh, because of the way their technology works. It's actually very, very affordable. Uh, and also the ability to do sample size uh, product runs where you could uh, offer your products in a sample size, but in an incredibly high quality package. And, and the other thing is their, their, uh, their product is compostable uh, and there is no other out there that I'm aware of a consumer product good where the package itself is compostable. So a lot, lot of good stuff there that uh, we'll, we'll get uh, into more depth, but I did want to just uh, not touch on that so you all were aware of that. So the idea of figuring out ways to reach um, some folks here in, in this market, um, you know, with, uh, with ECU, with uh, Biden, uh, you know, there are other large companies in the area. Uh, I think Taylor may be, uh, have her eyes set on corporate gifting, but, but in general, I think uh, there are ways to reach uh, these markets as well. Uh, so just kind of uh, keep that in mind as you as you think about your holiday holiday marketing marketing. Uh, Dennis, I did turn the video on. Um, if you look, that there's the type of pouches that we do. They open. Um, some of the printing and the picture isn't great, but the ability to do this printing is a first in the world, and the lighting poor, but there is holographic appearance on this on these okay. packages. Great, thank you. So we'll we'll take some more time on that, Anne, and you can you can get uh, some more examples uh, 
for the group. And I encourage everybody, you know, to, to reach out to each other if you see benefit uh, that you can gain from, from someone in the class. Or if there's someone that you would like to reach in the area, I have pretty good uh, c connections and contacts, uh, you know, all over the state. So uh, that's something uh, that we can do. Um, that's about all I have uh, for today. I don't know if, uh, if anybody has any questions or additional comments they'd like to make uh, before we adjourn for the weekend. Um, so I have a couple of questions for Ann. Um, so I've actually came by AccuLink and my day job is I sell uh, copiers and production equipment and stuff of the sort. So I was gonna see who do you guys get your uh, equipment from? So I've actually spoke with Art Morrison a couple of times um, just in regards to the topic. Sure. Um, well, uh, let me give you my number and give you a call. Um, you can call me. It's 252-714-1434. All righty. Thank you very much. Sure. Any, anything else uh, anybody has on their mind? Or just so you know, over my shoulder, that's my two horses. The brown one is Spooky. The white one is Emmy. They are brother and sister. They're 10 years old. Uh, and we got them from a rescue in Tennessee. And uh, they basically eat grass and, and wait to be fed, uh, you know, so they, they got a pretty good life. That's, uh, so I wanted to introduce you to them uh, if, in case you didn't know. Okay, anybody else? Very, Any... very cool, be be beautiful horses, Dennis. What's that? Beautiful horses. Oh, thank beautiful you. Beautiful horses, Dennis. Thank you, they're, they're Tennessee walkers, if you know the breed, they're five gated. So when you ride them, you don't go up and down, you stay totally level. Uh, which is really great for beginners and, and kids and stuff. But uh, my wife's uh, been riding for a long time, and uh, I, I'm just the guy who who does physical labor, you know, feeds them uh, their grain or go to the store and buy the grain and fix the fence and mow their pasture, blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm the unskilled laborer in this family. So thank, thank you all very much, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Thank you, guys. You all have a good weekend. Yeah, okay. have a good weekend, everyone. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye.